Mr. President, today is exactly one year since Superstorm Sandy hit my home state of New York and the surrounding region. Today is really a solemn day where we pause to remember the unimaginable loss of 61 precious lives and the great collective pain as countless other lives were shattered. Over 300,000 homes were damaged or destroyed and businesses lay in rubble. Over 250,000 businesses affected in all, many of which are still unable to open their doors. But there's something else to remember today. In the days and the weeks that followed Superstorm Sandy, we also saw the absolute best of New York. We know that New Yorkers are a resilient bunch. We get knocked down, but we get right back up. And as I've traveled all across New York City, I saw neighbors coming together, going door to door to help the homebound, donating resources, volunteering their time, clearing debris. In the Rockaways, I saw hundreds of residents create an impromptu bustling plaza of hot food, clothing, anything that people might need. I remember talking to one small business owner in Staten Island whose restaurant was nearly split in two by a boat from a nearby marina, and he simply said to me, we will rebuild, and we will rebuild better than before. I also asked him that day for dinner, to have dinner on the spot where that boat was resting. And he said, yes, and we did that. We did it just a few months ago, and it was amazing. In Westchester, a small business owner gave me a hug, and she vowed she would rebuild because she said defiantly, this is our community. On Long Island, I walked the streets of Lindenhurst, Massapequa, visited Long Beach and Fire Island. And while the devastation I saw was awful, I have never met more resilient and compassionate people. I witnessed homeowners struggling to pick up their own pieces and to get it out of the way to help neighbors, sharing food, sharing water supplies, giving each other rides to the stores, sharing generators, and clearing each other's debris. Now, while the road to recovery is very long and very hard, New Yorkers will rebuild, and they will rebuild stronger. But we all have to do our part. Too many communities are still recovering and rebuilding. Some families are actually still homeless, living in trailers or confined to the second floor of their homes, still waiting for additional assistance. Too many homeowners have not yet received the funding to repair their homes and their businesses. And too often, those that are struggling to rebuild have been caught up in red tape. Throughout the past year, I have pushed to change some of the federal policies that have stood in the way of recovery. And we have had some successes. We were successful in pushing FEMA to extend critical deadlines for Sandy survivors to document their losses so that those who have had trouble getting back into their homes aren't prevented from filing flood insurance claims. We were able to get the Department of Housing and Urban Development to relax regulations that would have prevented substantially damaged homes from accessing critical recovery funds. And we received assurances from the Army Corps of Engineers that they will fund critical shore projection projects at full federal expense, ensuring that these projects can move forward quickly without having to wait for communities to find the matching funds out of very tough and struggling local budgets that are already stretched too thin. But that's really not enough, because for all our successes, we still are facing so many challenges. There's still far too much red tape getting in between families and recovery. My office hears every single day from homeowners and families who are struggling to just move forward. Many of us are working on a bipartisan bill to postpone the potentially disastrous flood insurance rate increases coming into effect as the result of the Bigger Waters flood insurance reform law. So I urge my colleagues in the Senate to pass this bipartisan bill that was introduced by Senator Menendez and Senator Isaacson that would delay the premium increases set to go into effect until after FEMA has done a study and provided Congress with a plan to make the rates basically affordable. 
Our families work so hard. They're trying to rebuild. And frankly, they deserve nothing less. Some homeowners, even as they do rebuild, have started seeing their rates increase. This would cause so many of our constituents to be forced out of their homes and communities that they love, that they lived in their whole lives. This is why the Menendez, Isaacson bill is so critical and why I strongly urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this common sense legislation. Now, as we focus on providing communities with all of the resources they need to rebuild from Sandy, the federal government is partnering with states and local governments, the private sector and academia, to develop solutions that will protect us from the next disaster. We know that every dollar spent to make our homes, businesses, and infrastructure more resilient, four dollars in potential recovery costs down the road are saved. Earlier this year, Senator Wicker and I introduced the STRONG Act, which stands for strengthening the resiliency of our nation on the ground. This bipartisan bill, to build on the progress that's been made locally, requires the federal government to develop a national resiliency strategy and, and really assess where the gaps are and opportunities for improvement lie. It also creates a new information portal for both the public and private sectors to share information about how to strengthen our communities against future extreme weather threats. Mr. President, we have come a very long way in the past year, but I'm very sad to say we have so much more work to be done. Our communities are working hard as ever to recover but we have to work equally as hard towards rebuilding and being better prepared for the next storm. I yield the floor.